To get this started, we really need to lay out what those definitions are. And I'm going to use the Institute of Medicine's definitions that they published in 2001. And that is, male and female is dictated by the presence of the sex chromosomes and the reproductive organs. So sex is biology. Gender, on the other hand, is everything else. This is how society impacts a person, how they feel about themselves, how they may respond um, in different environments, environmental influences that may affect their health. When we talk about a patient, we can't separate the two when the patient is in front of you because that represents both sex and gender. But when we're looking at the biology of what causes diseases, we have to consider the basic biological difference between individuals and that most basic characteristic is sex. I think one of the most um, uh, publicized differences in medicine uh, regarding men and women is the presentation of cardiovascular disease. Men present with occlusive cardiovascular disease, that is the arteries, of the, the coronary arteries will occlude. In women, that presentation is not quite the same. Although there are some um, occlusions, these aren't all at one place. They tend to be diffused through the coronary arteries. And women will present with symptoms differently than men. And many times, these women were dismissed from the um, uh, emergency room um, going home saying they had indigestion or anxiety or something else. We talk about rising costs of health care and health care utilization and um, side effects and risks. If we're going to try to mitigate some of those, this idea that one size fits all actually feeds into that. If we can tailor the treatments more to the condition of the person and those circumstances, we're going to optimize that care, which in the long run should reduce the number of hospital visits, should reduce uh, multi-therapies in older, for example, in older women, and perhaps um, increase their lifespan at least their quality of life. And now we're talking about not necessarily less increasing life, but what quality of life does a person have as they age. When we talk about the structure of the human body and it's made up of cells, inherent in that basic makeup, there are biochemical pathways and substances which are the same in men and women, except for the sex chromosomes, which I mentioned before. So there was sort of a basic assumption that these, because all these other systems are the same, if you study them in one cell or one sex, they're going to apply to the other. But what we're now seeing is that how those pathways are regulated may not be the same. When we talk about the heart, it does the same thing in men and women, right? Beats, pushes blood out to the brain and all the other organs. But when you look at how it's structured, there's muscle cells in that heart and then there's material that holds those cells together. And that material called matrix that holds those cells together is different in men and women. Now why would that be needed? That would be needed because when a woman is pregnant that heart has to accommodate that increase in blood which she has to pump not only to her body but the baby. So the basic structure of that heart is different and that's something that's just now being investigated because it has um, impact on the development of uh, heart failure and how that heart failure might be treated and what drugs may work better in men or women because the structure of the heart is different. 